we are asked, what is the difference between a polar and a non-polar bond? And illustrate that with examples. Well, consider one of the simplest of all covalent bonds. The bond in which two hydrogen atoms share a pair of electrons. Each hydrogen atom is identical. The nucleus exactly the same. One proton. Therefore, is there any reason at all why the distribution of electrons in this molecule should in any way be unsymmetrical? And the answer is, of course, no. The electrons are evenly shared. There is no preference for one H over the other. This is the classic example of a non-polar bond. That's what a non-polar means, bond means, where the electrons are evenly shared with no preference for either nucleus. Let's look at another example of a non-polar bond. When we draw the Lewis structure for the molecule Cl2, We have 14 valence electrons because chlorine is in group 7A or 17. And we can make octets in exactly that manner. Well, we can say exactly the same thing about Cl2. Each nucleus is identical. And so we can make exactly the same statement. The electrons are evenly shared. There is no preference for one chlorine nucleus over another. And therefore, this also is a non-polar bond. But now, let's look at the molecule formed when H2 reacts with Cl2, namely HCl. Once again, we draw the Lewis structure. So, and we think about the distribution of nuclear char of electronic charge. Now, hydrogen has a much smaller nuclear charge than chlorine. The electrons in this molecule will be less attracted to the nucleus of hydrogen than to the nucleus of chlorine. The nuclei are not identical. And we have a number of ways of stating that. We say that chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen. We've discussed electronegativity as a concept. In general, electronegativity increases along a period from left to right. The materials on the left of a period tend to be metallic or semi-metallic. Those on the right tend to be non-metals, and the non-metals are in general more electronegative, more electron-attracting than the metals for the reason we've just given. So, the electrons are closer to the chlorine atom the chlorine nucleus than they are to the hydrogen nucleus. 
Therefore, this is a polar bond. between atoms of different electronegativities. And we can symbolize that in a number of ways. One way is to draw the molecule and give a small partial charge to each nucleus, reminding ourselves that there will be a slight negative charge around the chlorine and a deficit of electrons and therefore a positive charge around hydrogen. This is not a full positive or negative charge. We're not talking about ions present in gaseous HCl. It has no ions, but it is strongly polar. So the, the electrons are distributed in that way. Another way is to draw a dipole. And these really have the same meaning. A dipole shows the distribution of charge with the positive end, as you can see, that's a plus sign in the tail of the arrow towards the hydrogen and the negative end towards the chlorine. So both of these ways illustrate in a graphic way the difference in electronic distribution in a molecule like HCl from that in a molecule like H2 or Cl2. H2 and Cl2 are nonpolar the bond is nonpolar and the molecules are nonpolar. HCl, the bond is polar, the molecules are polar, having a dipole.